Hey, it's Yay for Yarn, and today I'm going to show you how to make a braided crochet bracelet. So here is the bracelet that I've already made. It's very simple, doesn't use up a whole lot of yarn. So this is great for using up leftover bits of yarn, scrap yarn, um, small amounts of any kind of yarn that you like, preferably a smooth yarn, and in a thinner weight category. So not like a worsted or a bulky, unless you're going for like a wide cuff bracelet. So here are the things you're gonna need. Very small list of supplies here. I've got some thinner yarn. This is probably about a fingering or maybe like a number one or a number two weight category yarn. Um, sport weight will work okay too, but you don't wanna get anything too thick if you're just going for a bracelet. Um, because you don't want it to be really bulky because it won't just be wider It'll also be thicker this way. So you just want a in general a thinner yarn I've got an appropriately sized crochet hook for the yarn that I'm using some scissors a small button and I've got a regular yarn needle a small yarn needle with a bent tip the bent tip is optional But I really like that and you're going to need a larger eyed sewing needle so you're gonna need a needle that the yarn will go through. So the yarn, the diameter of your yarn needs to be able to go through the eye of the needle. And the needle needs to be able to fit through the holes in your button. So this entire project is made with a foundation stitch. And I like to use either a foundation half double crochet or a foundation single crochet. And what that means is we are basically making a strip. We're gonna braid it and then we're going to add a button closure at the end. And a foundation half double crochet or foundation single crochet, you can do it in other stitches too, but that just means that we're making the foundation chain and the row of stitches at the same time. And this is different than just chaining a foundation chain and then crocheting across it because it stretches like a foundation chain does not. So as you can see, even though this is a close fitting bracelet on my wrist, it still has a lot of stretch into it. So it's very comfortable. It's not tight or loose or hanging off or anything like that. So this is pretty simple to do. What we're gonna start with is we wanna leave probably an eight to 10 inch tail because we're gonna use that tail later on. And we're gonna start by chaining. Now, because I'm doing a foundation half double crochet for this one, I'm gonna do, um, I'm gonna start with a chain three. Not because a half double crochet is three chains tall, but because we need that third one to work into at the bottom. If you're gonna be doing a foundation single crochet, then you can absolutely do two chains instead. And what I'm doing is I'm not making a tight slip knot, I'm just starting with a chain like that. There's no slip knot there. So then once we've finish that first stitch, we can pull on the tail and it'll tighten that up as if it were a slip knot, but we were able to work into that. So I've got one chain, I'm gonna do two more, and then I'm gonna do my first foundation half double crochet. So to do this, I'm going to yarn over, I'm going to insert my hook into this bottom chain, the very first one, I'm gonna yarn over, pull up a loop. So at this point, it's the same as a half double crochet, but first, before we finish it, we're gonna yarn over and pull through that first loop, which creates the equivalent of the foundation chain underneath. Then we're gonna yarn over and pull through three. So now we can tighten that very first chain by pulling on the tail. And when you do the foundation half double crochet, you're going to end up with a very neat um, edge on the foundation edge, what would normally be the foundation chain edge. And to work into that previous one, we're gonna yarn over turn to the bottom and insert across the two loops that are on the bottom of that foundation half double crochet from before. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Then we're going to yarn over, pull through one loop and yarn over, pull through three loops. So I'm going to keep working that foundation half double crochet until my strip is long enough. Now, if you can't measure the person's wrist, if you're giving it as a gift, you can't measure their wrist, then you can approximate, you can kind of guess at the approximate wrist circumference compared to your own wrist because this does have 
a very decent amount of stretch into it. So even though this fits me, it would also fit somebody with probably a wrist that's at least an inch or an inch and a half bigger around than mine. And it still would not be tight or constricting. So I can stick three fingers into that bracelet with my wrist and it's still not tight. It's got plenty of stretch. So if you're making this for somebody else you can't measure, then that's okay. You can just kind of guess at it and chances are it will still fit because of all the stretch that is in this foundation half double crochet or you can do foundation single crochet if you prefer. And so what we're going for is a strip of this foundation half double crochet that is going to wrap around the wrist three and a half times without stretching it. So by the time this is the correct length, it should be long enough to wrap around my wrist without being stretched three and a half times total and then I'll show you how to braid it. So now my piece is long enough, and I just wanted to show you my little trick for measuring it around your wrist. So what I like to do is take the end with the tail, lay the tail in your hand like that, and then just kind of let it hang over the side of your wrist, so that then when you go to wrap it around, we're just going to gently lay it over the wrist, that's one time, two times, three times, and then it needs to come up to the other side of the wrist to make that half. So by holding it in your hand like that, then the end of the um, strip is not going to fall. So what we're gonna do, basically what I did um, just now was I stretched out the loop that had been on my hook so that it doesn't come unraveled. And we're gonna start braiding this so what we need to do is lay it out flat. We don't want it to be twisted. And we want to kind of divide the length into thirds. So I'm just folding it to approximate where a third is. And what we've got here, here's the tail end, and here's the end over here with the working yarn coming off of it. We're going to leave this one alone and we're gonna use this tail this length of our strip with the tail coming off is gonna be the one that we're moving around as we braid this. So what you wanna do is use something to anchor the current working end of your strip to the two thirds point. So I've got it right there, I've got it untwisted. So this is at our two thirds mark, it's untwisted, and we're going to kind of anchor this to that two-thirds point. So when I let this hang, the end with the other tail coming off should be the same length as the loop that is this other end because we've got our working end kind of pinched together at the two-thirds mark of the length. So what I'm gonna do is put the crochet hook back into the loop and I'm just going to slip stitch through that other uh, strip that we are attaching it to, the other side, and I'm going to do the same thing a second time to secure both sides of our strip. And then I'm going to again stretch the loop out and leave it alone because right now we're gonna do the braiding part. So what we need to do is lay something on that end to keep it flat. So I'm just going to lay that right there so that it doesn't twist up on me. I wanna make sure all my pieces are flat because we're not going for a twisted braid, we're going for a flat braid. And this should not be a tight braid either. So here's what we've got. This end keeps wanting to twist on me, but that's okay. So what we've got is this one piece in the center. I'm gonna take my tail end, lay it over. I'm just kind of curving it around, but not twisting it. Lay it over that piece that was in the center and bring it through the loop. I'm gonna take the other side of the loop and bring it to the center like that, just as we would do any normal braid. Now we've got one stitch of the braid. We're gonna take the side of the loop that's over here and bring it to the center. And you just wanna to try to keep it relatively even, but it doesn't have to be perfect because this is gonna be able to shift a little bit um, because it's so stretchy and we're not doing it tightly. So now I'm gonna take the loose end again, bring it in between those other strands to the center like that, and bring it through this main loop. 
and I'm going to bring the left side of the loop to the center, bring the right side of the loop to the center, and then bring the loose end to the center and through the loop. Now we bring this side of the loop to the center, this side of the loop to the center, and then take the loose end through the loop again. And we just want to make sure that we're not twisting any of our strands, so to speak. This is kind of a three strand braid. We don't want to twist our strands. So again, from the outsides to the center on both sides of the loop, then taking that loose end and bringing it through the loop to the center and through the loop. Then I'm going to bring the right side of the loop to the center, the left side of the loop to the center, and then the loose end to the center through the loop again. And then we've got room enough for like one more stitch. So I'm going to take this little what's left of the left side, what's left of the right side, and bring those each to the center in order. Now all I've got left here is this little tiny gap. So I'm just going to take the tail end and tuck it through that hole. And at this point it should line up just about perfectly with the base of that loop that we just stuck it through. So if you want to tweak your braid and just kind of tug on a little bit of the strands to make sure that they're all even, then go right ahead. But we don't want to pull on them too hard or twist the strands. So this end up here, the braid is secure because we slip stitched through that part. And over here, we're going to need to secure this end. But what we're going to do is at the same time as we secure this, we're going to add a button. So here's our button and here's our sewing needle. If you don't have a sewing needle that the yarn will fit through the eye of, then you can use sewing thread instead of the tail yarn, but I'm gonna use the tail yarn. I wanna make sure that it's twisted tightly as it goes through the eye, because that will help it um, come through easier. If your yarn has a hard time going through, you can also try to use a piece of thread or another piece of yarn to pull it through. So what we need to do is secure the layers together of our braid here at the end. So we just wanna keep it flat I'm going to flip it to the back. Here's that little tail end that we tucked through. And I'm just going to do a couple of whip stitches, like so, to secure the end of the braid. So now that will not come unbraided because it's secure on both ends, but we need to add a button. So I'm going to go back to the right side. I'm going to take my button and lay it where I want it to go. This button has four holes, but if your button has two holes, then deal with it accordingly. So I'm just gonna come up through the holes in the button and down through the corresponding hole. I'm gonna go in an X pattern. So I'm going to go twice through the first pair of holes, twice through the second pair, going across the other direction. And we don't wanna pull these stitches too tight because you want the button to kind of sit above your crocheted fabric, because we're gonna make a little loop to go around it. So what you wanna do is just kind of pull on it a little bit, make sure that it's not too snug against the fabric. You don't want it to be like loose falling off, but you want it to have just a little bit of looseness. Then we're going to bring the needle up, but not come through the holes in the button. We're just gonna come up next to where the holes in the button are. We're gonna wrap the yarn around the button not around the button itself, but around the stitches that are going through the button. And then go back down into the same place we came up, into the crocheted fabric. And that will help give the button a little bit of lift so that our um, chain button loop will go around the button snugly and not um, have a hard time staying behind the button instead of around the edges of the button. So now I'm just going to Take a little stitch on the back and tie my yarn in a knot. I do not recommend using your large eye sewing needle for weaving in the ends because it is a little bit harder. So I have my yarn needle for that. I'm gonna deal with that in a minute. Now I'm gonna come back here to the end with the working yarn. And what I need to do is make a chain loop. We've already um, secured the end of this strip to the loop that's behind it of the braid. So this end of the braid is secure. We don't need to secure it anymore. 
we just need to make a button loop. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to chain about five chains, maybe six. And then I'm going to bring the other end of my bracelet around and wrap the chain around it to make sure that it is long enough to comfortably and snugly go around the button, but without being, you know, too tight that it's hard to get on and off, hard to get around the button. So now I'm going to slip stitch one more time through those layers to secure my button loop. I want to tighten that slip stitch. And now I'm going to do one more slip stitch to finish that off, except I'm not going to um, stop here to tie off. I'm just going to cut my yarn, leaving enough of a tail to weave in, and then just pull on it until it comes out. And then I can take this yarn to the back with my yarn needle when I go to weave in my ends. So I'm just going to weave in the ends now. Before you do this, again, you're going to want to check and make sure that the loop goes easily around the button without being too loose that it could fall off. So here is the finished bracelet. It's just a simple braided bracelet with a button closure. And I just wanted to mention that as you weave in your ends, you want to stick with the same strand. So if I were to weave in my ends into this strand, I would want to follow that strand down as far as I want to weave it in. Because if you weave it in and you go between the strands, you know, these strands are not tightly braided. So it could loosen as it is worn and used. So now you have a simple to make quick and easy crochet accessory that can be worn all year round and only uses a very small amount of yarn. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. If you make this project, let me know how it turns out for you in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe, making sure you click the little bell next to the subscribe button to be notified of new videos. Thanks for watching.